Welcome to Electro Online. Here our next example of how to solve physics problems in one dimension using graphical techniques. We have a daredevil on a sled coming down a mountain. The acceleration for the initial part of the trip is at 40 meters per second squared. So every second is going 40 meters per second faster for a certain amount of time. We don't know what that is. That is essentially what we're trying to find. How long does the sled need to accelerate? Then the slope tends to uh, uh, not be as steep. The acceleration goes to zero, continues at the same velocity to the end of the trip and covering a total distance of 17,500 meters and the total trip takes 90 seconds. So the time for part one plus the time for part two equals 90 seconds and that's probably an equation that we're going to need. So T1 plus T2 equals 90 seconds and of course what is the velocity that the sled will reach? So what we're going to do here is start out with an acceleration versus time graph. So start out with an acceleration versus time. So there's the acceleration, there's the time. This would be in meters per second squared. And is 40 meters per second for an unknown amount of time. So this would be T1 and this would be 40 meters per second squared. The area underneath that curve is the velocity that the sled reaches when we get to the shallower, less steep portion of the trip where the acceleration doesn't change. That will also be the final velocity. So this is the area here. So let's call this area equal to the final velocity. We don't know yet what that is. We do know that it's a product of the time times acceleration. The second uh, graph we're going to draw is the velocity versus time graph. So here's the velocity versus time and for the first T1 period the velocity increases until we reach the maximum velocity. So this would be V final and we have reached that after the time T1 has elapsed. This is called this area A1 and then we can continue this way. We'll continue for another so many seconds until we reach the end of the trip. This will be for a period of T2 and this would be area Two. And of course we know at this point that area 1 plus area 2 together must add up to the 17,500 meters. So let's write that down. Area 1 plus area 2 equals 17,500 meters. And of course we know that area 1 is the area of the triangle. So 1 half the base times the height plus the area of the rectangle which is the length times the width equals 17,500. Okay, the area of the base would be uh, the time, that's t time 1, and the height would be, of course, the final velocity, which is equal to the area that we have over there. So 1 half times time 1 times the height, which is the velocity, which is equal to the area of this uh, rectangle right here, which would be the height times the width. So the height, the height of the... Uh, triangle here is the final velocity which is equal to the area of this rectangle which is the height times the width. So that would be 40 times the width which is T1 plus the length times the width of this portion the length would be T2 and here we can go to T2 which is equal to 90 minus T1 so we can go ahead instead of writing T2 here we can write 90 minus T1 that would be 90 minus T1. We multiply that times the width of the rectangle. That's the height here. And again, the height is the velocity final, which is equal to the area of this one. So this is 40 times T1. That would be 40 times, whoop, times T1. And that all equals 17,500. So notice, simply by using this graphical technique, we have ourselves a very nice equation that then can be solved for the only unknown that's left in this case which is T1. So let's clean this up just a little bit. So this becomes a 1 half times 40 which is 20 times T1 squared. So 20 times T1 squared. Here we have 40T times 90 that would be plus 3600 times T1 and 40 times a minus T1 times a plus T1 that would be minus 40 T1 squared equals 17,500. And then moving everything over to one side, because that looks like a quadratic equation, we can then say that 0 is equal to bringing the minus 40 across becomes a plus 40. Subtract 20 from that, that gives us 20 T1 squared minus when we bring this across, which is 3,600 
T1 plus 17,500. And then it looks like we can divide everything by 20, make it a little bit simpler. So 0 equals T1 squared minus 20 goes into this 180 times. And then plus 20 divided by this, that would be get rid of that. Half of that would be, oh, let's see, 1750, 17,500, whoop, 17,500 divided by 20 equals 875. 875. All right, there's our quadratic equation. We can now solve that. We can say that T1 is equal to the negative B, that would be 180, plus or minus the square root of 180 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is 875. And the whole thing divided by 2a, which is 2. All right. So we have 180 squared minus 4 times 875. We take the square root of that, and we get 170. So this becomes equal to 180 plus or minus 170 divided by 2. When we add the two together, we get a very long time. That's not plausible because the total time can only be 90 seconds. So it's probably subtracting. So this would be equal to 180 minus 170, which is 10 divided by 2, which is equal to 5 seconds. So that looks like the proper amount of time that it would take to accelerate the sled to the speed needed to cover a total distance of 17,500 meters. So for 5 seconds, the sled accelerates. So now we come over here, we use this area. We can say that the area, which is equal to velocity final, which is equal to the height, 40, times the width, which is equal to T1. And T1 is found to be 5 seconds, so that would be 40 meters per second, divided by 40 meters per second squared, because that's acceleration, times 5 seconds. So that's a final velocity of 200 meters per second. I hope the sled rider does have a helmet, because that is quite fast. So the velocity reached by the sled, 200 meters per second. That speed would be kept going for an additional 85 seconds for part T2. And the first five seconds is used to accelerate to that speed. And again, notice using two diagrams like this, one that says acceleration versus time, one that has velocity versus time, it is quite simple to solve a problem like this. All right, one more thing of note. If you take a look at this equation right here, which we simplify right here, or again right there, that looks like the typical equation that you'll find when you write x equals x sub naught plus v sub naught times t plus one half a t squared. That's one of the equations of kinematics, and of course, it's not surprising that that's the equation you would end up with when you try to solve a problem like this. The only difference is that instead of start, starting with an equation like this, we started with a graph and again, of course, you get the exact same result, and in, in the end, you get the exact same equations, just starting with a graphical approach in this case.